Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together God's people say, Hallelujah. Jesus is on the throne, friends. All is well. All is going according to as planned. And so together, the people of God say, Hallelujah. Now, I trust that you are feeling blessed in Jesus, grateful and appreciative to be chosen to be called a member of the family of the Most High, that you have your Bibles before you, your coffee beside you, and you are ready to receive what the Lord has for you this day. Well, we're continuing our look into the book of Job, and today we find ourselves in chapter 4. Now, this is going to be the introduction of the first friend of Job. There are three there, slash four, a younger man who doesn't appear until the end of the book. But right now, we're going to hear from one of Job's friends that's come to comfort him, named Eliphaz. So, Job chapter 4, verse 1, Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said. Now he's just listened to Job have this pity party, complain about the day he was born, even curse that day. And so he's he's had enough. He says, if we essay to commune with thee, or if we desire to commune with thee, will you be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Behold, you have instructed many. You have strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now it is come upon thee, it's become personal, and thou faintest. It toucheth thee, and thou art troubled. Remember what we read in, in Proverbs 24.10 yesterday, when it tells us, if you faint in the day of adversity, which is exactly what Job has done, your strength is small. And that's what Eliphaz is telling Job. Look, you have ministered and helped others through their times of difficulty, but now that it has visited you, you failed to practice what you preach. Now, friends, I don't know about you at this moment, but that hits home for me. And it brings regret. It brings pain. It brings sorrow because I've been in that position. I've been in the position where I was able to minister to others the truth of God. And yet when the day of adversity visited me personally, I failed miserably. But I have learned from that. And I'm preparing myself for the next day of adversity so I can stand faithful to my God, to my King. And if we really want to be honest about it, that's why Jesus says, if you want to live, you must die. You see, if you've lost everything in this life, if you've forsaken it, if you have given it up, friends, pleasures, families, all the things that we build our lives upon in this life, if you've given all those things up, Satan can take nothing from you. Because when all is stripped bared and you're left naked before God, it is only your relationship with God that you will stand upon. And that's what Eliphaz is saying to Job here. You've ministered to others. But now it's come upon thee, and you faint. It's touched thee, and you are troubled. You question the very God that you so confidently proclaim to others. You see, another passage that comes to mind here is pride goeth before a fall. And Job is being put in check here by his friend because when all was well, Job's hopes were high. His message was clear. But now that he has hit the wall, Job is showing very little strength, very little faith. And yet this man, proclaimed by God himself, was just, pure, righteous, and perfect. No one like him in the whole earth. And so if Job was able to fall in such a way, friends, that should stop us in our tracks and make us realize how feeble and frail we are. Don't think too highly of yourself, in other words, because in a moment of time, you could be right back in the lap of sin. 
But then Eliphaz shifts his focus a little bit. In verse 12, he says, You see, there was this thing that was secretly brought to me, and mine ear received a little bit of it. It was brought to me in thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men. Now this truth is made clearer to us in chapter 33 from another of Job's friends by the name of Elihu. And in verse 14 he says, For God speaks once, yea, twice, but man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he, the Almighty, opens the ears of men, and he seals their instruction. In other words, God speaks to us, teaches us, and instructs us when we're sleeping. He visits us in our dreams. And that's what Eliphaz is saying here in verse 12. He says, In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? You know, friends, we may not ever let those words escape our lips, but how often do we act in such a manner? that we think ourselves higher than God, that we think we know more than God. And so this spirit who is visiting Eliphaz in this dream says, shall mortal man be more just than God? Is he more righteous than God? Why does he think of himself so highly? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, the maker, the almighty, the most high, the ageless one, Yahweh, he puts no trust in, in his servants, in his angels, he charged with folly. You see, God is the Most High, and everyone else is capable of rebellion and disobedience. And so God places trust in no one other than himself, not his angels and not creatures of clay. That's what he continues to say in verse 19. How much less does the Almighty place in those that dwell in houses of clay. So he trusts the angels more than he does us because he knows how frail we are. He knows our hearts. He knows how we are bent toward evil and backsliding. He continues in verse 20 and he says, they are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regarding it. Doth not their excellency which is in them go away? They die, even without wisdom. Doth not their excellency which is in them go away? Anything good in us will pass away the moment that we die. But it is only God who stands true forever, who is incapable of failure, of sin and iniquity. And friends, that is the God that we serve. And so we draw our strength from him. He is the one with endless strength. So when we can't go another step, we rely upon his strength. He is the one full of hope. So when we lose all hope, we rely upon him for that hope. All good things that we know that we can contemplate, they lie within him. And we lean to him for that endless supply. And so if it's faith you need, it lies within him. If it's hope you need, it's instilled within him. If it's love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, long-suffering, if these are the things that you seek, even his spirit, you'll find them only in him, friends. And that's the lesson that we take away from the book of Job. That's the lesson that Job is learning. He cannot rely upon his own strength because when that's gone, what's left? He can't rely upon his own faith because when that's gone, what's left? But if we are plugged into the Almighty and that's where we're drawing our continuity, then friends, therein lies an endless supply. So don't allow yourself to walk through this world empty. Plug into God, friends, because everything you need 
exists only in him. Hallelujah. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're again with us today. I pray that your journey will be truly blessed, that your eyes will be open to truth, and that your spirit will be open to his spirit, and you begin to walk and to talk and to live and to breathe as our Messiah, our King, our promised one himself walked when he was upon this earth. I truly love you, friends. Now, may Yahweh bless you today. May joy be upon your lips and praise in your hearts. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.